All right, welcome to the absolute last episode of our series on absolute power, where we're going to talk about being a superhero in absolute power. What does that mean? Well, superheroes have daily lives. They have uh, public personas. They have uh, ways that they are supposed to be. And in the last episode, we talked specifically about character quirks, but now we're going to talk more about public relations and uh, I think teamwork, if I remember correctly. So let's take a look at that right now. Present. Also, I think I saw something there for uh, your character's secret identity occupation which I think is is uh, something that a lot of people skip over and it it can really enhance your your superhero persona's abilities if used properly. Okay, so what we'll do then is I'm uh, just like the last episode I'm not reading every one of these, we'll read occupation. Okay. I have no problem diving into that. All right, so we're going to start off here with the daily life. So no one can be heroic every moment of every day. Superman can. <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, but he doesn't. Yeah, he goes and whines and goes sits in his fortress of solitude. Nobody likes me. <laughs> even, even the most powerful and dedicated adventurers need to take a break sometime. So, what do they do when they're not out saving the world? As the saving, saying goes, life is what happens while you're making other plans. Period. Inside quotes. Little what is life like for superheroes when they're not adventuring? Well, let's find out. Well, you got secret identity. So, you know, you're going on vacation to the Bahamas and hopefully nobody's bothering you. How does somebody that's, you know, again, we know that the Hulk transforms, right? Sure. But what if you're not somebody who transforms? What if you're beast? You're and just, you're stuck you're, with, yeah, you're, you're just stuck with the fur. You're just, well, you don't have a secret identity at that point because you can't. You know, there's, there's, not, there's not enough makeup in the world. I can't put on sunglasses. That, dude, dude, beast is in Cabo? No. <laughs> you're, you're not you're not going to get out of that but if you're like superman or batman or the flash or you know even wonder woman you can just put on regular clothes and be just some joe schmo right so you can go to cabo you, you, you can you can go to saint bart's you can go to all these places you know sit on the beach drink some mai tais and unwind you can do that if you have a secret identity you can have a personal history now the idea of your personal history is to kind of humanize the character to some degree. Um, now, can you do with aliens? You know how gamers are. I said humanize, so that means I've just thrown out everything else. No, it, it, the idea is to kind of build a backstory into your character so that you do have hobbies. You do have things that you've done in the past. Uh, you know, maybe you went bankrupt and had to sell, sell a house that you owned or something. That sounds mundane, but it could be something that for your character, you know, explains why he now hates all bankers i don't know yep. uh the bank but, foreclosed on my mom's farm <laughs> some bitch they, they took our jibs took our job. <laughs> <laughs> but talking about taking our jobs let's read sure. occupation because heathen dog demanded it yep. the, the next question is how the adventurer makes a living if the character is not a full-time hero he probably has a job or a student or is just as much work as what which is just as much work as employment okay that's he's trying to get the college kids to buy his book i get right, that yeah, okay. that's like good, saying good a job pandering is, mark yeah it's like saying a housewife is a real job <laughs> here comes the flame <laughs> here comes the flame uh and to be fair she does a lot of work so that's that's my covering that i said it on video so if she does murder me you heard me say it here <laughs> hey i'm i'm the house husband i'm not, I'm not trying to kill you so it's all good. Well, what does the hero do to earn money? Unless the character has several levels of the resilient attribute, he'll need to eat. Sure. It, is the character a teacher, a scientist, an artist, a reporter? Did he inherit wealth? Batman. Or have, mm -hmm. or has he had to struggle for everything he owns? Spider-Man. You don't, get, you don't get paid being a superhero, right? No. Nope. Hey, man, I'll rescue you. Well, maybe Booster Gold. But, you know, he's he's kind of a dick, so. Okay, so do you think that that superhero, and I'm asking this legitimately, do you think that superhero would fit the premise of this game? No. Yeah. No. The, uh, the, the uh, premise of this game is to, uh, is to uh, be noble, be honorable, and fight the temptation to fall. That's kind of what this thing's all about. But secret identity is very important because of your occupation 
Sure. Oh, yeah. For, for example, Superman chose an occupation at the time to be informed of all new developments. So he chose a newspaper reporter. Mm -hmm. Now he started off, he started off, you know, doing like, you know, kitty adoption and, and dumbass city hall B roll stuff, but that didn't matter. He was in the bullpen. He was around people who were doing the, the big crime stuff, the investigative reporting stuff. So he would hear with his super hearing, he would hear all conversations and he would know problems that are brewing before they exploded. That's why he chose to be a reporter. Now this day and age, you would choose to work for, you know, a 24 hour news station. Citizen because reporter. Then, exactly. You, you would, and you wouldn't even be a reporter. You could be an analyst. You just have to be in the area. You have to be in the building. You have to be around where the news is happening and it's happening all over the world in this place. You'll be able to hear things that, that, that are brewing, that are going to explode, not just in your city, not just in your country, but all around the world. So your choice of occupation can seriously impact how effective your superheroing is. YouTube commentator. No, I don't think so, Mark Hawkman. I don't think that's a good one. <laughs> Yelp reviewer. No. <laughs> Yelp reviewer. <laughs> I don't think that's a good one either. All right, well, let's... But, you uh, know, I mean, yeah. If uh, and, and again, if you want to just make it more in line with your character, like, like if your character has a super vehicle, your occupation could be mechanic. Mm -hmm. You could literally have a garage to house all your equipment and have a secret base underneath your garage that houses your supercar, you know, stuff like that. You do that. You, you synergize it with your superheroic persona. That's the best way to use your occupation. Or you could be dumb like Spider-Man and just be a student or a photographer, which has nothing to do with being a, <laughs> being Spider-Man. Well, as yeah, but a photographer back in the day would get into places like, like the reporter. Like I always looked at Superman being the reporter thing. It's like they're going to allow him into places to get a better view. Now, did he necessarily need that? Probably not. But to get the story, to get the view and like, how did Superman know about this? Weird. But he knew because it, somebody's reporting on it. Well, also, also, everyone knows Superman has super sight, super hearing. He heard you cock the gun. He heard you threaten your wife. You know, it, it, that, that's easily explainable. He, he can see through 100 walls into your soul. <laughs> everyone knows that, right? Everyone knows. So no, no one's going to question it. All right, moving on here. Uh, think about the character's skills and aptitudes. For what kind of jobs is he suited? Did the hero go to school, train for a job and get a degree? Or did he forge diplomas and certificates to invent a life? It's like the people who went to Test King to get all their IT certifications. Or you're, you're an alien who crashed land on Earth. You had to create your identity from scratch. You could do that too. Was this a genuine choice or did the character need uh, false records to safely function in society? If the adventurer has secret identity. Is he happy with the anonymity? Or does he dream of leaving the mundane life behind? Conversely, does the public superhero... Does a public superhero enjoy fame or wish he could return to his old life? How successful? Like, how angsty do you want your character to be? Right. Keep the angst level a little low. This is not a goth game, okay? Just let it go a little bit. I don't think we need to read the rest of that because these just get into more specific examples. So the, the idea is... Uh, you know, what do you do for a living and how are you supporting yourself when you're not superheroing? And like he already had said, does your job blend in with your synergize? Yeah, synergize. Ooh, look at that. Synergize. Yeah. Uh, then, of course, uh, they're going to have private lives, uh, the price of fame, cover stories. Your cover story. We kind of already talked about cover story a little bit with the old Superman thing. Uh, I wanted to read Price of Fame, but I'm going to move on here. What I will do is I will leave this up for people to kind of pause on and read on their own if they want. But the idea of it is, hey, when you're famous and there are even attributes in the game that represent this, uh, uh, I think they're even limiters, where if you're too famous, you can't go anywhere. Uh, people I expect you to do to take care of things look man the world's about to end and you're trying to investigate this but you got some kid saying rescue my kitten from the tree look kid i'm trying to save the world even though and the kid then doesn't suddenly you know he, he he goes on twitter or x or whatever and and, and starts bad mouthing everybody and it, it goes viral yep. you know and then it's just another hurdle right 
Why couldn't so, you save the kitten from the tree? Because I was watching the guy building the nuclear bomb. <laughs> yeah, I was I was trying to stop that guy. I was in the middle of a job. All right, Damn being it. a hero. Okay, he might love this section. Every role-playing game is someone's first, but it's unlikely that anyone reading Absolute Power needs the modern concept of heroism explained. Hmm. As villains beyond counting prove, fantastic powers and abilities do not a hero make. Sure. While every hero is unique, all share certain qualities, courage, honor, selflessness, dedication, and more. Each adventurer's powers and abilities are an important part of character creation. Yet, you should also give thought to the qualities that make your character a hero. And we talked about that in the last episode. Mm -hmm. Motivation pro provides the foundation of noble efforts, but heroism is more than a single desire, no matter how benevolent. And that's what draws the difference between my style of hero and <laughs> his style of hero. The, the the punisher my motivation is to be good or let me phrase that no my motivation is to rid evil and by ridding evil the, the end result is good yeah whereas but, you know a regular superhero's motivation is to do good by ridding the world of evil now it may sound like it all gets to the same result wrong because it colors how you go about doing it the his his gives gives no care about how the job gets done and it's just how means. the sausage is made no 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 just just enjoy your sausage at the end <laughs> whereas the regular superhero the first thought is doing good which means in 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 uh, battling evil and stopping evil, you do it in a way that keeps you honorable and noble and good. So it, it ends up with a with a different effect. Yep. Charity, you could uh, freely give up your time. Fame and infamy, you know what? You want to be seen. And you know what? I, I would ultimately say, I, I know like in a biblical sense, that's a bad thing, but I don't care. In a superhero sense, there's nothing wrong with doing it for the look at me's. I mean, honestly, you're just making yourself a target. But <laughs> exactly, yeah. I mean, uh, the, uh, again, Booster Gold. I, I talked about this before. He is he is a DC quote unquote superhero, and uh, I don't know how many times he was retcon. But years ago, when I came across him, he's from the future. He was a star athlete. He cheated, you know, the whole uh, you know betting on games and stuff like that. He, so he was disgraced. But uh, he used technology from the future. He, he got himself a super suit. He got himself some time travel technology, went back in time to be a famous superhero in the past. His motivations were all screwed. And he just wanted to be famous. He didn't really think about how. So he ended up getting endorsement deals he did to make sure he was in the public eye all the time. And no one respected him. Sure, everyone now knew him. Technically, he's famous. <laughs> but everyone thinks he's a freaking clown. Because he is. And he's wondering why he he's the fame isn't making him feel like it should. Because he's a, he's a clown shoe. He's a famous clown shoe. <laughs> he's a famous clown shoe. Uh, so, uh, again, this is about your character and being a hero. So, Charity, you know, being philanthropic, I, I think a philanthropic, there we go. Say the word right. Um, you know, we talk about fame and uh, infamy a little bit there. Uh, flaws, characters, are, heroes are going to have flaws. Even Superman has his kryptonite. You know, Batman has attitude issues. Right? What's that? He even has psychological kryptonite. You know? Oh, does it, it, Okay. Be, because he has an inflexible morality. And ah. a, a good bad guy like Lex Luthor can use that inflexible morality to put him in what he would consider a no-win situation. Make him doubt himself. Slow him down a minute. Stuff like that. So one of the comments here, and I'll zoom in on it, is uh, heroes do not let this stop them from helping those in need. They're willing to risk their lives repeatedly in the service of others. That That's the, the overly heroic. <laughs> uh, this is more me right here. Justice. One way or the other. Justice. <laughs> like, honestly, as a person, if I had superpowers, I would want the process to work. And I would support the process. I mean, there's an alignment for this in Palladium, and I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. I think it's unprincipled. 
But no, I think it's scrupulous. I want to do the right thing. I want to follow the process. But there comes a point when the process is broken and lets bad people go that I'm like, nope. Got to step <laughs> in. Yeah, that, that's when I'm like, you need to look the other way because I'm about to do something that's going to make you think badly of me. But uh, it needs to be done. Yeah. So uh, the wrongs must be righted, the innocent protected, and the guilty made to answer for their crimes in a fair and honest manner. I, right. I, I've, you know I've, I've, it, sun always shines in your world. Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, if you've got the power to try to make that happen, you do. I, I'm, I'm overemphasizing it right now, but you get the idea that, you know, the mentality isn't a bad one, but it's certainly not a heroic one. All right. Uh, mercy. You know, sometimes you just got to see, you know, we got to let the bad guys go. This isn't me. But sometimes you have to show an act of kindness because that kid who's watching over there that sees you want to rip off the head of somebody who all he did was take a pack of cigarettes. Well, Mike. if you're a hero, you wouldn't do that. But right. No, that's you know, that's the. Yeah. yeah let's, let's get a more extreme example like this guy. Five minutes ago, you saw him murder seven children. He wiped himself off, walked out, and 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 now and now he's uh he, he's around a whole bunch of kids at a uh at, at a school function. Superman comes in, grabs him, looks, uses X-ray vision, sees what he has done, and wants to pop this guy's head off like a zit. But he but all these kids are around and even though this guy in most people's, you know, determination would deserve his head being popped. Won't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Has to Homelander did reverse. nothing wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that scene when Homelander just yeah, everybody yeah, in the crowd. Yeah, yeah, I know it's his imagination, everybody. but <laughs> yeah. uh, so anywho, they're, they're helpful and you want to set the right, tone they have responsibility they take they do take responsibility for their actions uh correct me if i'm wrong on this one but i think even punisher does take responsibility when he goes too far or am i wrong about that i, I heard that he uh, did okay i heard it's venom that doesn't but punisher will punisher the thing is he will never turn himself in to the police he'll never will no matter no matter if he does something really really stupid that he believes is bad and out mm -hmm. of character I mean, he'll have an existential crisis. He'll he'll quit punishing for a while until he gets his head straight. But he'll never actually take full responsibility. Ah, like, uh, okay. Like go go to jail for that in the comics. He'll never do that. So I, I don't I don't understand that. No. Okay. Well, I, again, I don't know it well enough. I'm just going with what people said. But yeah, here, but, but, but the the responsibility thing is a good way to get rid of Superman, and it's been done in the past. Frame Superman in a way that he thinks he did the wrong thing. Superman will turn himself in. He will take responsibility for for this action, even though you know it ends up being a frame job, or he suspects it's a frame job. If he can't prove it, he'll turn himself in. And even if he can prove it, he may turn himself in to prove it. <laughs> Either way, Superman's out of the picture for a while. The bad guy, the bad guys are winning. Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's a psychological kryptonite that he has. He, he's he has an inflexible morality. You can use that. Use his responsibility against him. A lot of heroes have that problem, but is it really a problem in the long run? No. In the short term, it becomes an impediment. Yes. But if you don't have that responsibility, can you call yourself a true hero? I don't know, man. Flip a coin. A lot of quotes here that uh, I've highlighted, you know, over the paragraphs, but here's another one. Responsibility means the heroes do not turn away when they're needed, no matter how great the challenge. You know, again, that's an idyllic sense, but this yeah. game is based on that premise, at least to yeah. start. Yeah, I mean, uh, if 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 someone is there, if if uh, if the god of death is killing all these folks right in front of you, even though you don't think you can stop him, you still have to jump in there. You still have to try because even though you may die as well, you may you may save one other person. <laughs> someone may get away because of your sacrifice, and to you, that is a win. So you have the responsibility to try even though you're probably going to fail. Which leads to the next one that I won't read now, because I think Heathen Dog just defined it as well, which is sacrifice. Uh, mm -hmm. Then it goes into secrecy. Apparently that's controversial. It's one of the controversial aspects of uh, superhero genres, concept of a secret identity. You can read that later. Uh, teamwork. 
Uh, team teamwork extends Makes outside. Of, everyone knows that. Uh, well, teamwork extends outside of a hero's immediate group as well. Most superheroes try to cooperate however they can with legitimate authorities and government. Sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Sup- Superman doesn't just swoop in and you know move move every football across the one yard line and take credit for it. No. You know, he he wants to foster goodwill. He he wants to foster a, a unity of sorts. So, you know, if the police are already there, even though he could go in and fix the entire problem and then leave, he will go to the to the main guy in charge, the 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 cop in charge and say, "Okay, what's going on? How can I help?" Be a team player. He can still get the same job job done but look good doing it. That's that's a good deal. All right, we have about 20 pages to go, so we're going to speed up a little bit here. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, we got through the important part. I wanted to be slow, and we're going to be slow toward the end as well. But uh, the stuff in the middle just exemplifies what we've been talking about more. So I'm going to hit this one paragraph, and then we're going to move on. Great power. The difference between superheroes and other heroes is right there in the name. They're figuratively or literally super. Since they are distinguished by powers or abilities no normal person can truly possess, when discussing superheroes, one must confront their power. As with moral codes, every superhero is different. Uh, Oh yeah, okay, is different. That is a period. Roles, origins, and templates define a character's purpose, but the cold hard reality is that power affects the scale on which a hero operates. Uh, real quickly, Superman's pretty much at the top of the scale. Yeah, he, Who's somebody that's level. really low level? Dick yeah. Tracy. Dick Tracy yeah, yeah. is low level. Yeah, street level crime. Dick Dick Tracy street level. Superman is world level. That's you know, there's yeah. a whole bunch of, of gradations in, in between, you know, lo- lots of layers of that onion. But yeah, your 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 power level will determine how how great an influence you can have on the world, how wide an influence you can have. And this is why people yell at me for cutting myself off and not finishing a paragraph because a brilliant detective can be every bit as brave just and honorable as the atomic demigod but only one of them can smash meteors out of the sky if i would have just read that sentence we wouldn't have had to have that discussion (laughs) sorry folks uh for those for anybody watching the video later we kind of did a poll of of folks you know what they like what they don't like and i have a bad habit of stopping mid paragraph mid sentence to to blurt out my comment when the next sentence right there (laughs) so so there's another perfect example (laughs) uh I'm trying to cut down, and I hope in 2025 I will. Anyway, moving on here. So we got measuring might, non-powered, low-powered, mid-powered. It's just going to talk about the different power levels Here. of characters and, and how you can confront them. Uh, different crises you can do. So, you know, if you're flooding, uh, invasion. Okay, why did it only give two? Uh, okay, well, how do power levels affect if heroes in the field? Uh, one of Sun Tzu's most famous uh, statements is, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of 100 battles. Superheroes must know their powers and limitations. Not out of competition or myopia. Well, that's what players do, unfortunately, though. Mm. But because you can only best use your abilities when you understand their strengths. Self-awareness allows heroes to use their powers more effectively by letting other people handle things they cannot and concentrating on tasks which they sell. Here are two examples. Okay, so this is what this is. These are yeah, two that's examples. Teamwork. That's just proper teamwork. Okay. Yeah. We don't need we don't need to read that anymore. No. Got Sorry. it. Um Consistency and growth. Questions of balance and consistency are not only for the beginning of the campaign. Players and game masters must also determine whether or not a hero's powers remain stable throughout their career. While this decision can be adjusted after play begins, the group should consider how their adventures will develop over time. I get it. Okay, no, 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 no. This is this whole experience thing. I mean, do your do you get? Will your character be able to buy new powers in the same genre that you started with, or will it? Will he be able to buy powers that are uh, that are outside the ones he has? Or will he only be able to strengthen the powers he currently has to higher levels? How how is this going to happen? How how is the how is the superhero going to going to progress? I think that's what they're talking about here. Well, it also goes into the fact that at some point does a power as you're improving it go outside the scope of the campaign? And if you remember, there were artificial but but limitations he put on there, like on this level of campaign, no attribute should go higher than six or something like right. that, right? Uh, that's going to be up to you and your group, but it is a consideration. Look, I know it's going to sound like a dick move, but I don't like the players being involved in that. 
I like the game master making the decision. Now, does that mean you never talk to players? No. If Heathen Dog wants an ability and it doesn't sound doesn't sound inappropriate, then then okay, maybe you break that barrier. But if you're like, no, dude, I can't have you being able to I beam a planet. Sorry, that's just that yeah. goes outside the scope of the game. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's it's more like a like you you have a hard limit of say attributes or 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 statistics of twelve. But out of the five players in your campaign, three of them are are hitting that ceiling. Now, if you want to break that ceiling, you as a game master going to have to adjust your gameplay, going to have to adjust your world to be now generally more powerful and more dangerous because your players are now more, more powerful and can handle more danger. So you have to decide whether you want to do that or not. I get it. Changing powers, it basically talks about, well, what happens if your character changes over time, wants to change powers? That's, you know, you guys can figure that out. Yeah, what I thought, what yeah. I found funny here is rare for a superhero or villain to develop completely new powers or reinvent older ones. I don't know. Superman didn't fly to start. Yeah, he didn't fly. Batman had a gun. Ba oh, that's right. Batman had a gun. Um, yeah, had a but, but, I, but I get it. The, the tone of the characters. I, I basically understand. Right. Uh, and, Charles, any, anyone who's seen Superman 2... The whole, the whole uh, 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 plastic uh, sheet that ass that he threw at at Non and created a capture thing that was lame, but he had that power for a minute. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, uh, that that was the problem with with Silver Age Superman. He had powers, and he had any powers he needed for the story. <laughs> okay, well, he is super, I guess. Yeah. Um, talk yeah. Talks about other tools like you know, Mystic Senses and uh, um, sorry, informants and so forth. Building superhero teams. I was going to spend a little time on this one, but I want to. I want to keep this going forward. Uh, just understand that you got to have a common purpose. You don't have to have a common origin, but uh, you know how did you come together? Somebody put in chat earlier that that's where solo role playing comes into into being. Uh, I would disagree, but that's a whole different topic. And my only disagreement is that wouldn't be solo role playing. That'd be one on one role playing with the game master, which isn't solo. Um, anywho, uh, coming up with team names, a team purpose. All this is uh, is relevant uh, for your, or you'll come up with in your sessions or for your setting. I mean, why is your superhero group together? What is, do they all have the same purpose? Do they have a purpose that is at least a little bit coinciding together, you know? Or are, are you like the 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 stupid Marvel idea of the Defenders, where when, when, whenever something happens, some magical force brings these, you know, completely different superhero characters together to face that problem as a as a surprise to everybody you know you're gonna do that uh, i don't recommend that but you could all right i think this is where i wanted to start reading and it says read all of it although that kind of surprises me because i didn't think i wanted to read all of it um so I guess here we're going to start reading, and if we need to move on to a different section of this, but we are going to cover the next three pages. Um, mythic heroes, any scale. Superheroes are the modern gods. Fair. You've heard, read, or seen this a thousand times, no doubt, in a myriad of ways. Creators in love with the genre wax lyrical about, maybe lyrically, about its iconic nature. Directors frame their heroes in ways that evoke classical, epic, or even divine imagery. Silver Age writers and artists even turned to mythological gods into superheroes or invented entire pantheons of cosmic entities who serve as gods of the modern universe. Mm -hmm. As a theme, it has been beaten into the ground, then resurrected to dominate modern media. Fair. This is not without reason. The epic hero never vanished entirely, but there was a time when critics scorned the epic. Some still do. After all, the only comic book character to ever serve as an actor's path to one of the highest awards in the entertainment industry is a murderous clown. Who's that? Joker? Is he talking about Joker? He could be. The only comic book character to ever serve as an actor's path to one of the highest awards... Oh, did the did he didn't the say hero? He said comic book character. So yeah. I, 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 I think that uh, Joaquin, what's his nuts? Uh, did he actually? I, I think he won an award for Joker. So. Huh? Was this book? I thought this book was written after or before that movie. But okay, I, fine. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's move on. <laughs> uh, Merge con. Even then, the character had to be painted in realistic tones twice. Oh no! Wasn't Joaquin Phillips it, uh, or Phoenix? It was uh, the guy before him. The dude is dead. Oh, Heath um, Ledger. 
Heath Ledger. Okay, got Heath it. Ledger. That, that go. makes sense. Meanwhile, the ultimate what Afrofuturism tour de force that combined grand politics, intimate motivation, spectacular writing, and phenomenal performances. That movie barely earned a major nomination. Even the genre's best work struggle for recognition when they embrace the superhero's potential for mythic scale. That's true. I mean, uh, it, it's been a long time that a that a, a really really strong superhero movie has gotten big accolades. You know, like Superman. Uh, Wonder Woman did did the best, but the Flash movie was not well received. Uh, the uh, Dawn of Justice was not well received. Stuff like that, but stuff like Deadpool, very well received. But he's definitely not a hero. Definitely not. So I just I watched uh, Deadpool uh, Wolverine, whatever yeah. it was called. Dude, that movie is awesome. It's fun. Yeah, I I I, I absolutely loved it. I I loved what uh, Hugh Jackman did with the Wolverine character coming back for it again and so forth. Like I haven't, I didn't watch Logan. I haven't watched many. I've probably watched maybe thirty to fifty percent of all the Marvel movies. And I say that going back to the late nineties, early two thousands with was it X Men. Yeah. Um, because I remember we went to see, you know, that's when we were in the Air Force, so we went to yeah. see that. Um, I've only seen about half of them, but uh, I thought Deadpool 2 sucked. And pardon me for interrupting this with this, but there's a point to this. Um, but the first Deadpool and the third Deadpool, as I'm calling it, is it Deadpool 3? Whatever. Yeah. Deadpool Wolverine. They were absolutely amazing. Same with um, Guardians of the Galaxy. I really liked the first one. Second mm-hmm. and third, eh. But I really, really liked the first one. But that's because I'm not into the OMG I got to be the the uh, the Superman. I, I look. You'd think that I would like the modern Superman movies because they really turn him into kind of a gray area. Yeah, I, hate that. I but but I hate it too. But I hate it because that's not Superman. Stay yeah, true to the it. IP. Yes, yes. Uh, you started. You did this. You did this, Max. Okay. Now I have to say it. Superman Returns is even worse. Than, than the newer DC Superman. Even worse. People say, oh, Superman Returns is a great movie. I smacked those bitches in the face. <laughs> Superman Returns turns Superman into a deadbeat dad, which oh, he wow. would never, ever do because his dad let his dad sent him away. He didn't have a real dad growing up either. He had a fake dad. Shut up. And... <laughs> It says in the beginning in the beginning of the movie that this starts two weeks after the end of Superman 2. At the end of Superman 2, the, uh, he apologized to the president for leaving, saying it'll never happen again. Two weeks later, he leaves the planet. Screw you, bad writing. And, and his kid, by Lois Lane, ends up killing a guy with his first real act of superpowers. Guess what? His kid's a murderer. And if they continued with that flawed storyline, Superman would have to would have to put his kid in the goddamn Phantom Zone because he's got a taste for murder. That's exactly what would happen. You completely ruined Superman forever if you continued with that storyline. Thankfully, they crumpled up that storyline and threw it away and never brought it back again. But it, it was a dark day for Superman. When I have Superman not seen the movie him. and I know nothing about what he speaks, but. I agree with his animosity towards that because everything he said even tells me that's not Superman. So, um, all right. So the, there, therein lies the power that draws us to the superhero. No matter how many recognized experts demand stories of the mundane and mediocre, epics still sing in our dreams. Where society tells us a thousand ways, you're ordinary, you're small, you cannot make a difference. The epic re- re- retorts, yes, you can. You can be Odysseus. You can be Hua Milan. You can be Rama or Brunhilda or An- Anasi. I can never say that. Anasi. 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 Okay. I, I always want to say Ananasi, but it's Anasi. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I forgot the point that he was making here. Uh, that does not mean that your hero has to be a star spanning protector of reality, street level adventures. Oh, I get it. Yeah. So I like. So, so this. I'm not talking in the modern sense. It's too popularized, too beat up now. But when it first came out, I loved Game of Thrones. Or let's be more particular. Well, Song of Fire and Ice is the is the actual novel series. But Game of Thrones, the first book. Because within the first 48 pages of the book, there was incest. A kid was pushed off a hill. There's uh, execution. I'm like, I'm in! 
<laughs> because I like that sense of reality in that, okay? But I don't like it being completely popularized, and that's how everything is. Oh, Doctor Who has to have a dark side. Oh, Superman has to be a human. No, these are supposed to be people that stand outside the human norms. Yes. Incorruptible concepts is what they've become. Do not try and bring them down. The The moment the, the modern DC universe made Superman a killer is when I stopped watching DC superhero movies. I stopped. F you. You have no idea what you're doing. We're, we're going to skip a little bit here because I think we get the point of that and you can read more. And Heathen Dog's doing a really good job of you know explaining the superhero genre. Uh, hopefully with my take as well, but uh, uh, power fantasy versus absolute power fantasy. Right. One of the most common criticisms of superhero fiction is that it is a power fantasy. It's Yeah, it's Dungeons and Dragons 5e. Sure. It's why you made your game anime 5e, sir. <laughs> the implication yeah. of this label is that costume is that costume adventure has no value as a genre since it serves no greater purpose other than entertainment. What? What? This is right? a game. It's supposed to be entertaining first. Well, he's talking about other people's criticisms. Yeah. Fuck, I don't... Shut up. <laughs> Superhero stories, this narrative claims, are only about juvenile dreams of lording over others. That's Cue mean. sneers of contempt and complaints about how this pop culture phenomenon distracts from important issues or true art or some other genre the critic prefers. See, wow. now, that, that is a modern interpretation of what superheroism is. That's modern. That bringing Superman, we do. I talked about it already. Bring Superman yeah. off of from an idea to a real person. You ruined what being a superhero is supposed to be. A being a superhero is supposed to be. You are a guide. You are a beacon. You are a level that yeah. others will strive to. That's that's your purpose to be noble for everyone else, so they too can find the nobility in themselves. That's mm -hmm. what being a superhero is supposed to be. Modern superheroes. They, they ruined ruin that idea. You you know, and and the audience out there also knows that there are we'll just say a few takes that Mark has that I don't agree with. You know, uh, most likely artifact. politically in the real world, we would be on different ends of the spectrum, right? But so far, because I kind of read a little bit head on this, I I, I understand why he's he's kind of writing angry here. Uh, maybe angry is an ex is excessive way to say, it, but but he's definitely writing with a bit of passion here, and I agree with his passion on this. He, he continues on by saying, even a cursory understanding of superhero lore proves more sweeping versions of this accusation laughable. The single most famous line in the genre's history is about how important responsibility is for the powerful. Indeed, yeah, Spider-Man thing. Yeah. Every superhero that has become popular in mainstream media reflects that outlook, whether they came before or after that legendary quote. At its core, superhero fiction is not a fantasy about claiming power, but about using it to benefit others. And I would even say the struggle therein. Mm -hmm. The powerless gain power, and instead of seeking profit, they work towards a better world. Superheroes are brave, selfless, and just when generosity of might seems impossible the very idea of the superhero can be revolutionary yeah that, that's 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 pretty good i mean uh in in a day and age where if you have power it's expected you to only be selfish with it when a superhero comes along and has power and shares the benefits of that power with everyone that's going to even have a greater impact than normal so I skipped a couple paragraphs there. Uh, they're relevant, but uh, I want to continue on. Plus, there, there are a couple of really salient points in here I want to hit on. The name Absolute Power was not selected haphazardly. It's not an ideal. It's a warning. Power can corrupt. We're not going to dive into it now, but the mage game. <laughs> yeah. My character through that entire thing was a walking paradigm of, of generally goodness. And come on, we've got, guys, we've got to respect other blah, blah, blah. Until I was given the ultimate power and then instantly locked Garthon up in, yeah, in a monolith. Yeah. He was given power and, and then suddenly, you know, there was no convincing. They didn't have to convince anyone to do the right thing. You could make them do the right thing. Yep. So, I mean, I, I walked right into that trap. Uh, power can corrupt, but it does not have to. 
Awful traumas can drive great heroes to strive for even greater might, but no one person can fix everything. Only together can we solve our problems. When our friends and allies suffer, though, absolute power can seem like a solution. It is not. The absolute power fantasy is the most toxic one of all. I disagree. No, I actually agree with what he's saying. No, no, I, I, I do agree with what, what he is saying here. I just, there's a difference between game and superheroes and the real world. So, yeah. well, yeah, I mean, uh, if, if you want an example of this in comics, there's a really good comic series from a while ago called Kingdom Come. That's when Superman was done. Superman was done with all you stupid bastards out there not doing the right thing. And he became disillusioned with, with the people being able to learn, being able to do better. He no longer believed they could do better. They had to be made to do better. So he basically took over the world. And he thought every step of the way he was doing the right thing for the most people. When really, he wasn't. So I'm not going to read this entire thing, but uh, this is a little background for the game here, though. Most games set in superhero worlds will focus on playing genuine heroes. They cannot win every battle or solve every problem, but heroes always do their best. Perhaps the greatest distinction between absolute power and its predecessor, Silver Age Sentinels, is a greater focus on the gray area between the hero, uh, sorry, between hero and villain. This is something that has been brought up to me a ton of times since we've been covering this game. You know, it's just the second edition of Silver Age Sentinels, right? Yes. Yes, I'm very well aware of that. Do I know Silver Age Sentinels? No, but I, I know where it came from. Uh, but I like this here. So since a lot of people want to talk about Silver Age Sentinels, well, there you go. That That is one of the bigger changes between the editions is the distinction between absolute power and it's, I'm sorry, uh, it's greater focus on the gray area between hero and villain. While the trite saying that everyone is a hero of their own story is not quite true, there is certainly truth within it. All right, so, uh, and then, you know, personal code, so on and so forth. Anti-hero characters, we're not going to talk about those, but it, it talks about how you can incorporate those into your game. And then finally, player advice summary. We're going to read the first paragraph and then the uh, just the headings of each other paragraph, because I think they speak for themselves. Sure. Uh, the superhero genre is simultaneously broad and strange enough to defy a simple description. Some characters, titles, and adventures stretch the limits of the concept. It involves people with superhuman abilities, except when it does not. Metahuman adventurers wear costumes distinct from everyday clothing, though some blur that distinction beyond recognition. Superheroes never kill. Well, that is that unless they do. We could say that adventures should have at least some of these elements be part of the genre. There is a more straightforward perspective to consider, though. We know superhero stories when we see them. It's like that whole thing about porn. I can't, I, I can't uh, describe it to you, but I know it when I see it. On this page, we share our final player focus suggestion for character creation and gameplay. Like I said, we're just going to read the headings. Enjoy lots of superhero fiction. I know these guys tried quite a bit before we played Champions to have me read superheroes. Like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> and it, it would have benefited him in play if he did. I don't know. I liked how you guys had my character grow. Well, I know, but, but it. I, I think I think you would have had a, a better time playing the game if you had some background on why we were the way we were and and how your character fit in into into the overall scheme of things like you were a more punisher and we were a more superman type idea you know to be to know where you were mm -hmm. i think i think you'd have a better time playing the game you know you know what the bigger problem with that game was though is that nobody told me off off uh, up front like what what it meant to be you know a golden age hero i didn't this doesn't mean anything to me. Okay, <laughs> whatever. Uh, you know, so when I made when I made the character, it wasn't a problem until all of a sudden it was a problem. <laughs> like, right. wait, you can't you can't do that. Why not? Uh, nobody told you know. So so we just turned it into a role playing thing. Now, as far as the fiction goes, I just a one hundred percent got to be honest. I don't care. I'm not interested in it at all. I disagree with Heathen Dog. Where okay, no, I agree with the part where he said it probably would have made me uh, better in terms of understanding where they were coming from. But it, but I just, 
I wouldn't have enjoyed it. I don't care. I just don't care about superhero comics. I don't. I'm not mad that they're there. I love the fact that you all like to read them. I I don't care. <laughs> okay, it just don't. I've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles back there. He doesn't care about that. I understand. I get it. You know, that's why there are different genres for different folks. Now, with that said, I think that if you're going to play a game based on superheroes, this is a very good idea. Yeah, you should know something about superheroes. <laughs> you know, I mean, it makes sense, right? I mean, if, if if you're going into construction, you should know how to how to mix concrete. I'm just saying. If you're coming into my low gritty gritty fantasies uh, game, uh, and you want to play your elf as you know, or you know, sorry, your gnome as a tinker gnome, and that's not how traditional gnomes were, and we are going to cover that when he does second edition D D. One of the books I guarantee you, I'm going to go through is the gnomes and halfling book. Sure, uh, but uh, it is you know understand what it is. It's not your your makeup of it. You have to understand what the genre is about. Now, the good thing about superhero fiction is it's vast. You know, so it isn't like you have to fall within this little square. No, no. Hold there's, on. there's going to be something you'll agree on an idea. Yeah. Out of all the multitude of ideas in superhero fiction that you can get behind. And ask your GM for suggested examples, I think is perfect, especially if yeah, he's running I mean, it, a particular type of campaign. It depends on the character that you are creating and the GM will recognize what kind of character you're creating and then, you know, give you, give you some, uh, some reading material that speaks toward your character. <laughs> this next one, I want this I shouted from the this. mountain. T- you really, I, uh, th- this is why I got kicked out of, uh, out of Garthon's game. Because I did not create a hero who fits the campaign. Wait, wait, I didn't do, create do you have a, a problem with what he's saying? No, no, no. Th- this is what I did wrong. Oh, oh, I thought you meant you had a problem with this. No, no, no. This is what I did wrong. I did yeah. not create a character who fit in the campaign. Mm-hmm. So I was not asked to return because I, I only created problems. And I, I completely understand that. And you don't make that mistake. If you're going to create you know, a, a superhero... He has to be able to fit in the world that he's going to live in or with the group that he's going to superhero with. And if you consciously not do that, you're the problem. Yes. And this is true for every game. So uh, at the back of the first edition Dungeon Master's Guide uh, for Dungeons & Dragons, uh, there's, there's, I think it's the back, back front, whatever. There's a quote in there from Gary Gygax that basically says... Um, was it game first, campaign second, players or something like that? Or I, I forget the order. I don't even care because I think that whatever he said in there was was not correct. Setting first, game slash camp. Uh, so I, I I changed it to setting. It used to be campaign first, but setting first. I I to me campaign and setting are synonymous. But uh, setting first, game second, players third. Does that mean you throw your players away? No. What that means is the setting trumps everything. Now, an example, and I'm sorry I'm using Dungeons Dragon stuff in, in, in a superhero game, but it's just so much easier for me to do. Dragonlance is Dungeons and Dragons, but it has many changes to it. You don't have paladins, you have the Knights of Salamnia, and there are three different orders. You can be one of each, right? Not going to go into all the changes, but that's just an example. You have the moons that, that affect how magic is cast. Still based on Dungeons and Dragons rules, just adds a touch more complexity to it. So it's still Dungeons and Dragons, right? But no, you can't take in your psionic because it literally says there are no psionics in, in the world. You have the, the to fit gods the setting. actually pick them off the planet. Right. So you have to fit the setting. Setting first, game second. So what does that mean? Well, the games have rules to it. You can't make a character that breaks all of the rules of the game. Now no. for me, that includes the spirit of the rules. So uh, you know, I'm much more into the spirit, you know, why that why that rule exists than exactly the the plus ones and plus twos. So yes, I'm deep into lore when it comes to things. No elves don't do these things. Well, mine does. Then you're not an elf. GTFO. Uh, yeah. you know, and then finally, then players. Okay, if you fit within the setting, and what you're doing fits within the rules. All right, now let's entertain what it is that you want to do. Now in his game. Because of the point system, it's actually much easier. This isn't a class-based game. It doesn't have those restrictions. Really, just fit within the theme. If they're running a game that says we're all Golden Age heroes, you kind of have to understand what that means. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't tell me that up front. But they well, didn't. But but you have. So you can't. Put, no, I want to be the vigilante. 
No, we're not playing There's vigilantes. No vigilantes in Golden Age superheroes. You have to wait for Silver or Adamantium Age or whatever. You know, the, the Golden Age heroes were all, you know, high and mighty ideals. Mm -hmm. And if 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 that would have been yeah, adamantly brought up to me up front like this is what you can do my choice is one of two things playing the game or not playing the game or playing the game as, as intended because i think it's just al that ran that game right garthon yeah. yeah so uh I, we're not going to go into the miscommunication in there and, and, and hell it might have been even on my side i just don't remember being told about that if if i had been like no i want to play a character that doesn't give a dang about this then al's response would have been like well go find that group yeah, yeah, that, that, <laughs> like, this is not your table. Exactly. Um, but I wanted to play with my friends, so you know what? Character change. Be innovative in character design. Now, in some games, you can't do this, but this is a perfect game system for this. Find ways. Don't just try to be like, well, wait a minute, if I take this ability and I can combine it with this one, then I can do these other things. Ah, I made the perfect character. Ah. No, put something interesting out there. Have fun with this. I, you're a champion, guy, so you've done characters like this yeah. uh, uh, way more than I have. I, t tell me about the flexibility, or tell the folks out there about all the fun flexibility you can have. You know, like he says here, to further develop attributes and defects, enhancement and, litter, and limiters not detailed in the rules. Like how you can go about making very interesting characters. Yeah, un unlike a uh, uh, Watsy role playing game version one and two, and three, four, you know, uh, <laughs> a little bit. There is no right and wrong way to create a character in this game. There is not. There's the way, and that's it. It's not right. It's not wrong. It's, it's, it's however you make it, because your character is as good as the, the, the sum total of how you make it and how you play it. As long as both of these synergize, you're going to have a good time, and your character is going to do well. There is no, oh no, you're a fighter. You must take this. You must take that. No, there's so many ways to get the same effect mm -hmm. going completely different avenues of thought and, and action that there is no right and wrong way. You have to have some kind of attack that kills people from a range or not kill, but the, you're a superhero that, that's, that stops people from with, with range. There is at least a half a dozen ways at the top of my head you can do that with this book. No right way, no wrong way, just the way. And that's it. So you have to get your mind into that concept. There is the way. Your way is the way. His way is also the way. Not right, not wrong, just is. Once you're free of that shackle that there's a right and wrong way, you can now just swim in the creativeness, swim in the, in the pool of, of innovation. Get to the same place in a different way can be a challenge to you now. It can be fun. How do I get there, but go that way or use this power or use that power? How do I use a mental power to get a physical result? Well, you can do that in this game. If you take, take the right defects and add-ons and all that stuff, you can do that. It can be fun. Try it that way. I don't, I don't think a lot of people will go back to saying, right. oh, there's a right way, min, max, this. You know, no. None of that crap. Keep that, keep that to yourself. Try it differently. But notice that this be innovative and in character design comes after create a hero who fits the campaign. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying he intentionally made a priority list like that, but I'm reading you know, it well, that well, way. You don't want to innovate yourself out of the world. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, do not be afraid of defects. I think that kind of goes without saying. Yeah. If you want to jump in on these, you can, but I'm going to kind of be through. No, be fine. a team player. This is more That's, about you oh being a God. player than... Go ahead. That is that that is, that is the, the best role-playing advice I could give any player anywhere at any time. It doesn't matter if your character sucks or you think your character sucks. It doesn't matter if everyone else thinks your character sucks. As long as you play as a member of a team, the people at the table are on the same side all the time. You're going to stumble into fun. This is going to happen. 
stumbling upon you. When, when I was younger, I used to like the whole idea, and I don't mean like I, I looked for it. I'm just saying it didn't bother me. The idea of, yeah, make your character and, oh, maybe a secret agenda or something. I hate all that stuff now. No, all that stuff is crap now. I know, I know some people be like, no, you can do that. Sure, you can no, do you it if you can. want to. But uh, I have enough experience with that stuff to find out that that ends up causing more disruption to a game. Nine times out of ten, yeah. it's, it, 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 it ends up causing bad feelings. Right. Oh, that's funny you say that because uh, that's going to be the next thing we talk about. Uh, it is I now my expectation is we all make characters together, yep. and and it's for the purposes of everything from filling roles if you believe in that, or uh, make sure people aren't duplicating. If again, if that's a problem, which it doesn't have, we've already talked about how it doesn't have to be a problem in this game, or. Also, just to understand how you fit in. No secret agendas, none of that nonsense. That was fun when I was a teenager, maybe in my early 20s. It's it's not something I want to deal with now just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. So, uh, yeah, uh, be a team player and uh, find a reason why your character is going to be with this group. And I don't mean, well, I suppose my character would never do this because I have... No, then no, no. Find have a, a better reason that, that, that your character can say, okay, this because they're doing this thing it's better to be with them than without don't don't just do it begrudgingly you know you are you are in control of what your character thinks and does you can make a legitimate excuse on why you would be with a super team even if at first blush you wouldn't be with the super team get with the program you're at the table trying to have a good time together don't it's take not that about away you, from you, you, you. <laughs> Yeah, it's not you, it's us. Hey, would you like to read this headline? Yeah, do not take game events personally. <laughs> this is very important if your game master is dumb enough to have one of the other players have a secret agenda that no one else likes. <laughs> All right. So yeah, but don't take game events personally. If you are a, a blue haired, you know, I I, I, oh, wear, I wear my I wear my feelings on my sleeve. I'm offended at everything. Number one, I don't want you at my table, but if you somehow sneak to my table and something happens in a fictional world, a fictional thing happened that hurt your feelings and you feel like you need to talk about it, you need to step. Get out. Trust the game master. Now, I have a couple of thoughts on this one. Like, there's a good comment here. Where is it? Uh, yeah, don't assume. Where's where's my mouse? There is. Don't assume the game master is out to get your character. Are there bad game masters out there? Yes, there are bad people in literally every organization that's ever existed on the planet. You know, there are bad teachers. There are bad cops. There are bad. It doesn't matter. Bad clergy. Bad clergy. Yep. And and you know, and to some degree, you could compare them to superheroes because they're supposed to be held to a higher standard. Yeah. So. Don't assume that the game master is out, out to get you. Just because something bad happens to your character, it one, it could be did. die rolls. And yes, die rolls win. I, I know that even this game says it a little differently. In my world, die rolls trump, trump, trump everything Trump else. your feelings or your hopes yeah. and dreams. Right. And if you hopes die, yeah. you die. Go ahead. Exactly. That's how it works. I mean, uh, you're, the, the game master is not against you and you are not against him. That's the main takeaway you need to you need to just have when you're starting a game. It is not adversarial. You are exactly. not against the game master. You sometimes may be against the world or the people or things in the world, and the game master is in charge of adjudicating the world. Yep. He's not in charge of killing you. He's not in charge of destroying your hopes and dreams. He's also not in charge of keeping you alive. Exactly. He's not in charge of helping you either. So once you have that mindset correct in your head, you're going to have a better time and you're going to be able to roll with these punches a little easier because no one's at fault but the dice and people getting mad at the dice and, and changing dice because these dice are cold. <laughs> I think it's I think it's funny and dumb, but I'd rather, the the <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd rather you blame the dice than the game master. Yeah, I'd rather you blame the dice. So go ahead and do that. Oh my god, I don't know how many times Bob used to throw dice across the Yeah, like nope, that dice sucks. Throw it across the room, get more <laughs> dice. There you go. Oh man. Uh there's another takeaway from this that I that I wanted to add in there. Crap, but I just uh trust game game masters not adversarial agree with that. Oh one of the issues that I see, you know, Heathen Dog's way more against players than I am. <laughs> Yeah. When it comes to our, you know, uh, if you've got your shirt there, you can go ahead and hold it up if you want. Uh, but, uh, but 
we're accused a lot like oh my god what where did the players touch you uh, uh to have you feel this way about them well we actually did we either were part of or a lot of times we've seen really bad groups or really bad things that happen and one of the things that i've i've seen in my time and maybe this is because i'm not the most intelligent person out there but is because of the is is the fact that players and by the way that group did it as well in my mind, are always trying to pull one over on the game master. And okay, maybe I shouldn't say always. They're often trying to pull, pull one over on the game master. Whether it's how they read the rule a certain way, or they feel that this power plus this power should do something, you know, something differently than maybe you, either what it says or there's an implication, whatever, whatever it happens to be. And like, oh, I'm going to get the game master on this. I'm going to stump him because uh, he isn't prepared that if I do this plus this plus this, because nobody ever does this. I'm the first person to ever think of it. Just because the game master hasn't seen it doesn't make you right, okay? And me, and he's been around for this, and a Sean from Palladium, I, I love, because he and I, we never talked about it, but we're on the same page on this one, have kind of the same standing with this. You know what? You got me. Wasn't expecting that. Really good imagination you had there. I'm going to let you get by it with this one time. But after this, no, but, but I should be able to do it. No, 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 no. Hey, 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 what, 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 what was that? What was that you want it to work at all? You, 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 <laughs> right. What? Pick one, pick one. It works now and never again, or it never works. What do you want? You just being a dick. No, no, I'm, I'm trying to, trying to save the integrity of my world. Boom. There it is. Setting first. Setting first yes i'm not saying all players do this but i have seen it at most tables that at least one player tries to do this some successfully some not and if, i'm sure i tried it as well uh, let, let's be honest about this but, uh, nature. i mean come on yeah but trust the game master that he's not just saying no to you to ruin your day he's saying yeah. no because as heathen dog said the integrity of the world is better and then finally provide constructive after after not during Oh my God, Pe people who, who bring this crap up during gameplay, their, their problems and, and foibles and, and their issues and all that stuff, dude, wait until after the game. And then I will listen very patiently to all of your problems. But right now is everybody's time, yeah. not your time. And it's just because you feel your time is ruined right now because you didn't get that one trick out that you wanted to do. Doesn't mean just... you can ruin everyone else's time too. Yep. Don't do that. Don't be that guy. And that's it, guys. That is it. We have covered absolute power. And I'm just going to say this openly because I've received the, uh, the information. I know most of you didn't like the game. At least the people that are our regulars. Oh, yeah. A lot of people didn't like the game. And uh, one of the things that came out of some polling that we did is, uh, what was it? <laughs> cover more Palladium. Stop cover Palladium. <laughs> um, so here's what I'm going to say at the end of this series. Is this a perfect game? No. I think the book could have been written a little better. It has nothing to do with pronouns. I, I've, I did find some things that were typos. Somebody corrected me today. Apparently it is the right way to write it. It still sounds like an adverb to me, but that's fine. Um, but there, there are some aspects about it. Mark's writing style is actually difficult for me to read compared to pretty much anybody else's. That doesn't make him a bad writer. Uh, I'm not into superhero games. This game isn't for me. So why did I want? Why did I make sure we covered it this year? One, because Mark's been cool with us. All right. Two, why not? Why not expose yourself to more games? Like I'm only here for OSR D and D stuff, but you already well, know OSR D and D stuff. What what yeah. does that help you out with? Broaden your horizons a bit. Right. I'm only here for Palladium. Again, we love Palladium. Yeah, you know we're going to be doing for Palladium. I, I agree. Palladium's great, but there are other games that are great too. And if this isn't one of them, I completely what? understand if you watch like the first video and like, yeah, I'm not going to be interested in that. That makes perfect sense to me, and I'm not going to argue that. But one of the things that came out of the polling was that people are like, I I'm only interested in these games. Well, but if you already know those games, you know, why... What, what is it that we can provide? Oh, you know, there's some of them just say, hey, we look for your takes on those games. I get that. And I, and, and I don't want to derail this too much. So let me get back. Uh, we want to expose you to more games. Yeah. That, I mean, that's uh, I, we, the, the worst thing that could possibly happen to this channel is it becomes an echo chamber. 
I do not, I do not want to be just the Palladium guys. I do not want, I mean, <laughs> I love Palladium and it's, it's worked well for our channel. That's great. And a lot of people do believe like we're the Palladium guys, but there are plenty <laughs> other Palladium guys too. But I don't want to just have people come here to hear things they already know. To agree with us with things they would have already agreed with us to. I don't, I don't want just that. I want them to, I want you to experience other things as well. Games like Absolute Power, games like Shadowrun, games like Earthdawn, games like, you know, 1980s Marvel superheroes, you know, all the old stuff too that that doesn't get its due because it was never popular enough or people just forgot it existed. Feast of Legends is a good game. It's a well-made game. But there's just hammers rub that and in, french don't fries you? and shit in it. <laughs> you know, that's just the way it is. But it's a good game. It's fun. It's it's weird to say, but it's true. You know, like and and I discovered that because of this channel. I would never, ever have picked up Feast of Legends, a, a role playing game made by a fast food company. I would never have picked that up if someone didn't say it here on this channel. And I'm happy they did. You know, because you rubbed that into me, you also never would have picked up Star Wars Adventures or Star Trek Adventures. I never would have picked up Star Trek Adventures either. <laughs> and I, I'm sad that I did that. See, but, there we go. Now we're even because you did the whole yeah, Feast of Legends thing. Yeah, yeah, that was that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, uh, I want this, this channel to, yeah, you know, pe people come to it to learn more about something they already love. Great. That's awesome. But also come here to see things you don't know that you like yet or that you end up hating i want that too yeah um let's hit a couple comments here because i have a couple star but i want to hit this one first so a ton of games yeah. i i love i bet legion myth i think he said uh, meant to say won't even read let alone make a video about um you're you're right but here's here's something um weird guy i am drawing the line on like every indie game out there especially on the osr side because to me they're just somebody's homebrew of dungeons and dragons that's not yeah, to knock any to be clones of each other yeah i'm not trying to knock anybody make your game do your thing also i've received in the last couple of months i've received a bunch of collaboration type stuff where people want to sit down and talk with i'm not into the interview thing as much as people think i am because apparently uh people say i'm good at it with that said with that said i'm trying to clear out the games i have here first now i don't know if this is you weird guy but i know a bunch of people have posted they want us to cover the tiny d6 or the d6 mechanics sure yes that might not be for a long time though because i've got i've got at least a year's worth of games up here plus i still haven't even got to the kevin crawford games i've been wanting to do the kevin crawford games for like two or three years now and and he's coming out with another one he's coming out with a fourth one so we have stars without number worlds without number cities without number and ash i think it's ashes without number oh my god you know i want to cover those as well so I, so for me for like when it comes to covering people's games by the way i'm not knocking weird guy this is a, a thing for everybody um I, I'm going to clear out the games that I have back here before I really address new stuff, because if I have it, I probably want to talk about it at some point. I hope that makes sense to folks. Now, that doesn't mean overviews can't be done, like he's going to do uh, sure. Wretched Flesh uh, and, and some other ones. So uh, that does not preclude any sort of overviews. But as far as the deep dives go, yeah, uh, weird guy, it's going to be a while before we get to a lot of those. So, um, But hey, hopefully we're doing this for many more years. So, Go ahead. That's my answer. Okay. He says one. I say there isn't a best version. Wishy-washy bitch. Um, no, well, th there isn't because uh, they've all got... A third is the worst, and that's weird for me to say because third isn't bad. <laughs> uh, third made a couple of changes that so ruined what Earth Dawn is to me. Th th third is the addition that homogenized the disciplines. It wasn't... Exactly. Fourth, we, you know, and that, that's not what disciplines are. Di disciplines are a rigid way of thinking. Yes. That's what lets you use magic, dumbass. Right. Uh, and so we like to blame fourth for that, or people like to blame fourth wasn't the one that homogenized, no, and fourth just carried the traditional on. First edition was second edition skill system, or is the perfect game. 
is, is the perfect game or so, although i would argue that high circle characters weren't really play tested and i think he even admitted that for first edition and causes some problems but we didn't get we didn't get to 13th circle in in our games um, or i would say play fourth edition but bring back the combat chart and the, it, people hate the combat chart for some reason i think the, all those people are ridiculous armor yeah. defeating hits are freaking awesome They're, and if you don't like armor defeating hits you don't like earth on and i will yeah. say that by yeah. the way, we're still in our absolute power segment, so let's get oh, through some of these comments. Okay, sorry, sorry, I thought we were done. Sorry, sorry. Uh, start that. That's my fault because I was. Uh, we have uh, bring back Arthur. Bring, okay, that's uh, so. This is the only one. Hero games need more than any other. Hero games need solo play for each character before making the team, and allows for many solo games in the future, just like the comics or movies. This was based on the comment that I made earlier. Here's my issue with this. I think you might be misinterpreting solo play. Solo play is literally solo play. Weird guy had a comment about that earlier where you're using the Oracle system and so forth. I think what you mean, Saigos, and correct me if I'm wrong, is one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And that's not solo play. That's one-on-one. -on -one. That's a little different. Um, so if you mean true solo play, no. If you mean one on one, I don't disagree with you. I think yeah, I think yeah, it, it could be great. I mean, uh, the, the, they do that for movies now, with the with the whole Marvel thing. You have the solo movie for each hero, and then you have the ensemble movie where they all get together, right? So you have the you have the the, the solo game sessions, one to three, so solo game sessions for each of the of the four to six characters, and then they all come together for the ensemble where they form their team. If you want to do that, you can. It just seems like extra steps to me to get to the same place, but I understand the sentiment. So he's a one on one is what he meant. I, I yeah, get it. I yeah, you yeah. start that. One. Um, all right. Well, I'll, I'll grab a couple more of those chats afterwards. Those are the only ones for this. Guys, thank you very much for going through the series with us, uh, especially those who did. I know we actually had a couple people who came here that specifically because we did cover absolute power. So, Thank you to you guys. Um, are we going to cover another Discami or Mark McKinnon game in the future? Maybe. I have none on the docket right now, but that doesn't mean it won't happen. Uh, could we cover other books? Like you can see the big white <laughs> list of books, you know, like season one, season two, possibly. But you have to understand, I am not an anime guy. And I'm not or a comic book guy. guy. So, so odds are low. Yeah, Bessem and and which I have, you can probably again, you can probably see him back there. And Absolute Power are not my type of game. I did this series out of respect for Mark. So we covered Bessem. Why not cover Absolute Power? But that doesn't mean that it won't happen in the future. So uh, he'd be the guy to bug about it, though. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else, or can I put the subscribe thing up? I think we're good. Okay. Yeah. This. <laughs> I right, thank you everybody again for for sitting through the series with us. I appreciate you all for all for being here. 2025 is going to be a great year for us. We're going old school in 2025, and what does that mean? We're going to be covering some old school Dungeons and Dragons. We're going to be covering some old school FASA. We got some Star Wars that we're going to mix on in there if there's time. I mean, it's going to be a long year. We're going to be looking at even the overviews. I mean, obviously we're going to have Palladium overviews. You know what? Palladium's old school. We call it that, so therefore it is. Uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of stuff that we that we cover uh, next year, and I, I hope you guys uh you know, stick around for that and uh yeah i got i've got nothing else thanks again and please like subscribe and share